In the price to earnings conundrum video, we encountered a situation where two different entrepreneurs bought an identical asset, in this case it was a, a pizza parlor or pizzeria, but they each financed it in a different way. This guy was a little bit more conservative. He paid for it outright, so the entire asset was his equity. He had no debt. While this guy, he borrowed some money and he even had some non-operating assets. So he levered up. For every dollar he put in, he borrowed $10 from the bank in order to buy more asset than he actually brought to the table. And we saw that when you did their financial statements, their revenue, cost of goods, everything up to the operating profit line was the same. And that makes sense because if, we, if you remember the first introduction to income statement video, operating profit is really indicative of what the operating assets are generating. So in this case, it's what these purple, this purple area right here are generating. And you could also consider that the enterprise, the, what the enterprise is generating. And everything below the operating line, everything below the operating profit line, is either coming from non-operating assets, that would be the case of non-operating income, and the entrepreneur on the right had some of that, he had some of this non-operating income, $2,000 per year in that case, while this guy didn't have any. And then you have expenses associated with interest. right? In this case, this entrepreneur had 5% of $100,000, so $5,000 a year. And then when you have these differences in capital structure, it changes what your net income is. And they had slightly different net income numbers. But what we saw is when we applied the same price to earnings ratio, and they had the same share counts. I didn't change too many variables here. I just really changed how they paid for the asset. But when you, have, when you applied the same price to earnings ratio to both, to both earnings streams, to both companies, you got something that was reasonably unintuitive. And, and I, I, you know, there's no trick here, really, because it's not crazy to assign the same price to earnings ratio. And if you try it out, if you grow this guy's revenue a little bit, if you actually grow both of their revenues by the same amount, or both of their gross profits by the same amount, or if you grow both of their operating profits by the same amount, you're actually going to see that this guy's earnings per share is growing faster. So given that, someone might say, oh, because of a leverage, maybe I'm willing to pay even a higher multiple. So it's not crazy to pay the same multiple for both of these guys. But what we saw at the end of the last video is when you apply, let's say, a 10 multiple, or really any, any multiple to both of these earning streams, you get, you get a situation that at first doesn't look crazy. OK, the market cap of this guy is 210,000 if you apply a 10 multiple to their earning stream. While the market cap of this guy is 189,000 if you apply a 10 multiple to their earning stream, right? 10 times 18.9 thousand is 189,000. 10 times 21,000 is 210,000. But what was the conundrum? What really got us thinking was, how can this whole this equity stream right here, or this equity or this earning stream, be worth 210, and this one be worth 189? When this guy only put 10,000 in initially, and this guy put in 100,000, he put it 10 times as much. And if you wanted to value, so when you're paying 210,000 for this asset, for this equity, you're essentially saying that this asset is worth 210,000. But if you're saying that this equity is worth 189,000, right? That's what the market cap is. It's the value of the equity. Then you're implicitly saying that this asset, that all of these assets, are worth the value of this market capitalization plus this debt. Right, so that's 289,000, and then if you wanted the value of this operating asset, you would subtract out this much right here, the cash. So you got something like 279,000. So when you apply the same price to earnings to these same to these similar businesses, you actually got a situation where you're overpaying for this for this asset relative to this one, even though they're identical. So that left us with the question: Is what do we do? Why did the why what 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 can we use other than a price to earnings ratio? And that's what this video is for. So the short answer is one, you do have to use something different. Price to earnings ratio is a good quick way of comparing two companies relative to their growth or relative to an industry. But it does lose a lot of information relative to how the companies are capitalized. And you saw in the last video that how you're capitalized. When I say capitalized, I mean how do you pay for your assets? If you have a lot of debt versus a lot of equity, what actually happens on the earnings line is very, very different. And so you lose all of that information. And so if you want to capture that information, when you look at the price of a stock, you have to figure out what you're actually paying for the enterprise of the company, the enterprise value of the company. So when I talk about the enterprise or the enterprise value, I'm talking about the operating assets. 
if it's a, you know, it, it gets a little bit more complicated if you're talking about a financial company like a bank or an insurance company. But if we're talking about a widget factory, the enterprise is essentially the assets, the asset value, the enterprise value is the asset value of the assets that allow the company to do business. So whatever uh, factories, uh, well in this case it's a pizzeria, so the ovens, the building, the the uh, the actual uh, places, where the, the places where people actually eat their food, and even the cash that's necessary to operate the business. It's not, the enterprise value shouldn't incorporate the cash that's surplus, that's not necessary to operate the business. So that, that begs the question, how do you calculate the enterprise value? So you could go backwards and you say, okay, for given price, how much am I paying for an enterprise value? So let's say that this stock, let's say that company A or this one, let's say that stock right now is trading at, let's say it's trading at 20, let's say it's trading at $20, while companies B, so this is the current price that you could buy it at. So it's the asking price in the market, is at $20, while this one is at Let's say it's at ten dollars. It's at ten dollars. So at first glance, you might just do a quick price to earnings ratio, and you'll say, okay, for twenty dollars, I'm getting, I'm getting, what two dollars and ten uh, earnings per year, assuming it's not growing or something. So my price to earnings is approximately, I don't know, I don't have my calculator in front of me, but two twenty divided by two dollars ten, it's going to be nine point something something, right? While this guy for ten dollars, I am paying. I'm getting a dollar eighty-nine of earnings per year. So what's a hundred divided by eighteen? It's like is it five or six times? It's going to be five point something. Five what six times eighteen is sixty plus fifty. Yeah, it's gonna be five point something something. So when you superficially just look at this, you're gonna say, wow, this is a cheaper price to earnings ratio. Maybe I should buy that. But what we saw in the last video is that price to earnings isn't a good relative valuation metric when two different companies are capitalized very differently. So what you want to do is instead back out what these prices imply about the enterprise value. So what does $20 imply about the enterprise value, and what does $10 imply? And how do you do that? Well, first, you say, what is the market cap? Market cap. So you take the price times the number of shares. If you remember, we had 10,000 shares. So in this case, 20 times 10,000 shares implies a $200,000 market cap. In this case, we have $10 times 10,000 shares, so it implies a $100,000 market cap. Now remember, the market cap is just what's left over. So if, if let me redraw those, those two diagrams, because I feel like I'm. So in, in, for this entrepreneur, you have the assets and all of the, ec and, and there's no debt. So the assets are kind of completely represented by the equity. So if the market cap is $200,000, you're essentially saying that these assets, these operating assets, are worth $200,000. So in this case, when the, when at, a price of, at a price of $20, we know that the enterprise value, the market enterprise value, so what the market is saying the enterprise is worth, the operating assets are worth, is $200,000. Now in this case, remember, the market is saying that the equity is worth $100,000. Let me draw that. The market is saying that the equity is worth $100,000. But of course, this company has a lot of debt. It has another $100,000 of debt. Actually, let me, let me draw this a little bit different. Let me see how much I can erase. No, I can't erase it like that. Let me erase this thing. All right. So in this situation, the market is saying that its market cap is $100,000. So just to be proportional, let me draw it like that. Nope, I didn't want to use that one. This is $100,000. This is the equity, or the market capitalization, or the market value of the equity. That's what the market cap is. And that's just the price times the number of shares. And then it has debt. It has, if I remember correctly, it has $100,000 in, uh, 100, in debt. So we take $100,000, $100,000 in debt. $100,000. And so what is it saying about the assets? So the equity plus the debt or the liabilities is $200,000. So it's saying 
all of the assets are worth two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars. Right, this is all of the assets, two hundred thousand dollars. But what we need to do, we want to figure out the value of the enterprise, not just all of the assets. So if we remember, there were some of the assets that were actually operational and some were non-operational. So we had uh, ten thousand dollars of cash right there. So we have ten thousand dollars of cash. So we have ten thousand dollars of cash. So when this stock is trading at ten dollars, it implies a market capitalization of a hundred thousand dollars. It implies that the liabilities plus equity is two hundred thousand dollars. So all of the assets are two hundred thousand. But if we were to subtract out the cash or the non-operating assets, what's not necessary to operate the business, we get a hundred ninety thousand dollar of enterprise value. So in this case, they're saying that the enterprise value is one hundred ninety thousand dollars. So in this case, when you looked at the price to earnings, you're like, wow, this is half as expensive as that. This is a great deal. Let me buy it. And I just happened to make up the numbers so that even when I did the enterprise value still, but it's, it's only 5% cheaper. Here it looks 50% cheaper. Here it looks 5% cheaper. And so it might be a little unintuitive of, you know, to figure out the enterprise value, you, you take, and this will, see the, this will be the formula that you see in a lot of books, enterprise value is equal to market cap, market cap, plus debt minus cash. And you might be like, when I'm trying to value something, why should I add debt back? That debt is a negative thing. Isn't shouldn't debt make my enterprise worth less? And why am I subtracting cash? Because cash is a positive thing. Shouldn't that make my enterprise value more? And the reason why, well first you subtract cash is, and it really should be just cash that is not associated with the enterprise. And you'll see a lot of people do it in different ways. Some people will subtract out all cash with the, the argument that the company doesn't need to use any of it. But, what, but the real idea behind it is to kind of capture the assets that are actually generating the profits of the enterprise. And the, enter, uh, the profits of the enterprise are the operating profits. And the reason why you add debt is, think about it this way. If you wanted to buy out this company, if you wanted to buy, let's say from this company, you wanted to buy his assets at the market price, how would you do it? Well, you would have to pay what? You would, you would have to maybe get $200,000, right? If you got $200,000, you could buy these guys off. You could pay them $100,000 and own that. And then you could buy the bank out, pay them $100,000. So you paid $200,000, you would own all of this, right? This would all be your equity. And then you would get a ten thousand dollars back if you know if you wanted to 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 take this cash, right? So you would have essentially paid two hundred thousand dollars, which is the market cap plus the debt. That's what you would have had to do to buy out both of those, um, I guess you could say, stakeholders in the company. And then you would get back the cash. So you would have to pay net one hundred ninety thousand dollars to own this enterprise. And hopefully that makes a little bit more sense as why the enterprise value is actually described this way. Now, the one thing you might say, OK, Sal, you figured out how to calculate enterprise value from a share price, but what if I want to go the other way around? How do I figure out what a company's enterprise value should be and then figure out its, what its share price should be? Well, one metric, and there's two metrics. The, the most common metric that's used is EBITDA. EBITDA. I won't cover that now because it's a new term for you, but it means earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And people look at something called an enterprise value to EBITDA ratio. And I'll do that in the next video. But what I like to do is just think about, OK, what are the real earnings from the enterprise? Well, that's the operating profit. That's the operating profit, right? And then you can apply a multiple to that based on what other companies are trading at or how fast it's growing. So let's say in this case, we're saying they're both generating $30,000 in operating profit per year. Let's say that I want to apply a, a I don't know, I want to apply a five multiple to its operating profits. So let's say I want to say that, that EV to operating profit, which I frankly think is a better metric than EV to EBITDA, and I'll cover EBITDA in a future video. Let's say that I think for this industry, it should be five. Now let me say it should be six. Six times is a good multiple. So in both those cases, the operating profit, operating profit, was thirty thousand dollars, so that means that EV should be thirty thousand dollars times six, which is equal to one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. 
Now for the first guy, if the if the EV is one hundred eighty thousand dollars, if I'm saying that this thing right here, the market value should be one hundred eighty thousand dollars, then I'm implying that the equity should be worth one hundred eighty thousand dollars, and they are there's there are ten thousand shares, right? So what I essentially I would take that EV and I would say, well, that's the all of that's equity. There's no cash there. There's no debt. So all of this is equity. So I would divide that by the shares. So I would say that the market cap for the first guy should be 180,000. And so the per share price, the price I'd be willing to pay is $18 because it had 10,000 shares, right? $18. Now let's take the second guy's situation. We both agree in, in both situations their enterprise value should be 180,000. This right here should be $180,000. But in this guy's case, what is the what are the assets? The assets are the enterprise, 180 plus 10, plus 10K, right? This whole left-hand side is $190,000. And then the market, and then if you wanted to subtract out, figure out the market cap, you would take this whole thing and then subtract out the debt to get the market cap, right? And then you would be left with this piece right here, that right there, right? You were just figuring out this whole distance, subtracting out this distance. So essentially, you would say that the market cap is equal to the enterprise value plus the cash minus the debt. And it's good to draw those balance sheets if you ever get confused, minus the debt. So the market cap is equal to 190 minus 100K is equal to 90K. And so if you divide that by 10,000 shares, you'd say that I'm willing to pay $9 per share. So if you believe that the enterprise value of these pizzerias are identical and that they're both worth $180,000, you should be willing to pay $18 for company A, and if you're completely equivalent to it, you should pay $9 for company B. And now, if you're a little bit more aggressive, you might like the leverage, you like might like how company B is growing, et cetera. Maybe you like to pay a premium for that leverage, or maybe you wouldn't because it also increases your risk because you get leverage on the upside or on the downside. But anyway, I wanted to introduce you to enterprise value. In the next video, I'll introduce you to EBITDA.